All right, so what I've got here is my Drawbot, but it's the sort of Mark II version of the Scar robot arm. Uh, I inherited some ideas from the original one I built, plus I saw the TRS Tipring Sleeve Bot on the Make site, and I liked some of the changes they made. Um, one of the things they did that was a little different than mine was they had the arm touch the ground uh, so that that helps relieve a lot of the, the, the strain on the arm so you don't get as much um, tilting back and forth. But it kind of just glides over the surface of the, um, the drawing as it goes. The other thing they did was they counterweighted the arm with either the electronics or the battery. In my case, I'm using the electronics as a counterweight, and I'm using um, the uh, uh, wall power as the um, method of doing it. Now, the PC next to it is streaming G-code. So mine is a little different from the TRS bot, and it's a little bit different than my last model. My last model used fourth, and I streamed fourth down, fourth commands to move the arm. Uh, I since have stopped doing that, and I'm using um, a C interpreter, which is basically Gerbil um, for G code. So my tool chain consists of taking an image, a JPEG, running it through Stipple Gen 2, which converts it to a, ve a scalable vector graphic, uh, also converts it to a, what's called a traveling salesman problem path. So then what I can do is um, proceed to uh, draw without lifting the pen, okay? And so as you see, it's just drawing this image all around. It never actually lifts the pen up, okay? Now here's some previous ones I've drawn. Like this is Hello World, okay, which I drew. And this is a circle which I also drew. And you can see they all contain these little like step stipples. Uh, this is a fractal triangle drawn using the same technique. Uh, not bad actually. And it, what's nice about this is that it kind of makes up for the fact that servos are not very linear, nor, nor does their dead band let them trace very straight lines. So by constantly drawing crooked lines, it doesn't really matter. So this is a fractal star. Not really a fractal, it's just a, a curve filling star. So that's another one I drew. This one's a smiley face. Uh, it's probably gonna take it about seven minutes to draw, so I'm not sure how much of it I'm gonna show in this video. Um, but so the, as I said, the tool chain is you export it as a TSP vector graphics. I then have my own homebrew code which converts um, the SVG to G code. From there, I can use the Gerbil uh, streaming tool. Um, because that's a client that's built already, I can just use that. And because I'm using the Gerbil parser, or, or a descendant of the Gerbil parser, I can use that to receive the G-code on the microcontroller side. That's why it kind of starts and stops like that, because it's essentially half duplex. It'll send it a G-code command, wait for their acknowledgement, send it a G-code command, wait for the acknowledgement. So it's a little on the slower side. However, it's um, pretty goof-proof, um, which is why I sort of like this whole setup. And um, as you can see, it's already drawn uh, one of, you know, part of the face. There's one of the eyes that it's drawn, and it's drawing the uh, rest of the smiley face. Now, I'm not sure how well most of that's showing up on the video, uh, given the... Um, the limitations of this camera. So I'm going to just invert this a little bit so you can see it much better from above. See how it's drawing away like that and it's already drawn about a third to a half of the smiley face. Okay, I'm going to move this back to its original position. So, um, as far as SCAR arms go, they're very pretty simple to build. Uh, there's one servo on the bottom. Uh, of the arm, which is the shoulder joint. There's another servo in the elbow. The kinematics are really pretty simple compared to a full-on five-axis arm. Uh, all you have to do is calculate a vector from this point to the tip of the pen. Uh, once you have that vector, you basically can calculate 
using uh, some trigonometry the angles that would be necessary to make a triangle where that's one leg of the triangle. Um, greatly simplified. The movement path is done by essentially interpolating points between the, the two scalable vector graphics points. So what you'll do is you'll basically, if it's moving vertically, you'll interpolate along the y-axis. If it's moving horizontally, you'll interpolate along the x-axis. If it's moving diagonally, there's a line algorithm. I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's Bessier's algorithm, um, where you basically break the line up into little segments and then just draw it. As you can see, it's, it's almost finished another one of the eyes. And it's just going to keep going here and finish this, this drawing. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to bother showing. Uh, it'll just keep percolating along and finishing that drawing eventually. Uh, one of my failures, I had a lot of successes, but I had a failure. This was supposed to be a Dalek, which came out miserably awful. Um, and it's because it doesn't have enough points. Um, this, this drawing here has about 600 points, which for something so abstract is pretty pretty straightforward. Um, if you, uh, and you notice there's a little bit of recoil every time it moves. I gotta put some rubber feet on this thing so that it doesn't move around as much. The uh, things I like about the um, this design, the TSP robot design, that I didn't have in my original one, is they built the robot up from a clipboard, which is really nice because that means you now have a work surface the robot's calibrated to. It also means that you have a, um, besides a work surface, you have a hold down, the clip that's built into the clipboard. So it makes for a really easy to build drawbot. And I'm thinking I could probably hack the servos with something like Open Servo to get rid of the dead band. And that would uh, improve the resolution. But you know, it's, it's pretty decent actually. Here you can see it's got one line, one eye finished part of another eye in the mouth. Okay, so it's doing that plain filling curve, the traveling salesman curve, and it'll very slowly finish up that entire drawing uh, and be complete, okay? So that is the um, Scara Drawbot Mark II.